Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, we'll be reading beginning at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the devious methods of Satan. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. We are engaged in a series of messages on the world beyond. And today we come to look at the spirit world and more directly the world of evil spirits. We do not like to think about it, but we are surrounded, involved and challenged by demonic powers. Homes are falling apart because the devil is attacking them. Our schools have become a battle zone because demonic powers are roaming the hallways. Some of you are struggling with situations in life that you don't understand and would to God that you could get out from under and it's only because you're under demonic attack. If you look behind every liquor bottle, there's a demon. If you go down yonder to the dark streets of our cities and find those peddling drugs in the hand of and behind the heart of every one of those is a demon. If you go and find those who are the peddlers of pornography, there is demonic activity going on. We're in a world that is being encroached upon, attacked by demonic powers, and the church by and large is both uneducated and does not understand the things of the devil, and so we do not know how to combat him. The forces of evil are at work all around us, for instance, the black-clad teenage terrorist who stuck a gun in the face of Cassie Bernal there at Columbine High School and asked if she knew Jesus. When she confessed her faith, they pulled the trigger and blew her away. And this young lady paid with her life because of demon empowered and demon-possessed young men. Or consider the young man who gunned down his classmates there in Alabama and later confessed that he was part of a satanic cult who offered sacrifices unto the devil, who were engaged in casting spells, and who were praying for demonic powers to come to their life. Or consider Marilyn Manson, America's music guru to the teenage population, himself is satanically evil, and the lyrics of his music are so vile, so repulsive, so vulgar, that I dare not read even one line in this congregation. This man is a man who is demonic, he is demon-possessed. He is a man who is operating under the forces of evil. And there may I say to you, young person and parent alike, are you listening? Now listen, I'm going to stop just for a minute. Don't be walking out. 
The devil is trying to break up the service today. And just mark it down. You need to listen. Parents and young people alike, the music that you're opening your ears to hear may be the door through which Satan is going to enter into your mind. You need to be careful what you are listening to or what you're allowing to become a part of your children's lives. We're engaged in spiritual conflict. Some of you, both with people and with situations that you face, realize that you're in warfare. In our homes, at our workplaces, at leisure, and sometimes, I hate to admit, even in the church itself, Satan raises his ugly head and involves people and seeks to destroy them, to divide situations, to tear apart husbands and wives, to destroy relationships, and to bring down the power of God. I'm here to tell you that if we're spiritual, we must understand and not yield ourselves to these things. Oh, we go around and we sing, Oh, how I love Jesus and we sing victory in Jesus, but we have very little victory. As a matter of fact, our theme song for most of us would be better, Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen. But I'm telling you today that when we understand the heart of where we are, it'll change our life in what we do. Now, Paul says, you're engaged in spiritual warfare. So how are we to deal with it? First of all, notice in verse 10, he says that we are to prepare for battle. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Now the word finally is a very poignant word and it relates back to everything that he has said prior to this. Now, if we're to be prepared for the battle in which we are engaged, the first thing that you need to see is in chapter 5 and verse 18, we're to be filled with the Spirit. You see, just being saved does not mean that you're filled with the Spirit. As long as you are uh, allowing the flesh to operate and be in command, you're not being filled with the Spirit. It's only when God comes to you and when you yield yourself to Him and when you trust in Him to take command in your life, when you deal with sin of any degree in your life, that God's Spirit will fill you. And folks, understand me that if you're not filled with the Spirit, you're going to be defeated in your Christian walk. Satan is going to have his way in your life. So we're to be filled with the Spirit. The next thing I see in that chapter is, he says, be faithful. Be faithful. Beginning along about verse 19, I believe it is, he begins to enumerate those various areas of life, and the first one of them is this. He says, husbands, be faithful to your own wife. Now listen to me. God says that a man has one wife. He is to be faithful to that wife. He is to live within the confines of his marriage vows. He is not to be looking for others or even looking at others in a lusting fashion. He is to keep himself only unto his wife. Well, two women said amen. Can the rest of you join in and say amen? Only unto your own wife. That's the word of God. It's the, it's the word that God speaks to your heart and to mine. And we are seeing our world today that has been sold on a playboy mentality and where men are reading the penthouse and other types of sleazy magazines and buying into the pornography that's coming across their televisions, whether it be uh, through programming or whether it be through the Internet. And I'm telling you today that America is under the greatest attack of the home that we've ever seen because Satan is out to destroy marriages. Husbands, keep yourself. Be faithful unto your own wife. Now God says, wives, you're to do the same thing. 
You are to be happy with your man. Now, I know that a lot of women back up from that. They don't like that scripture that says that the wife is to be subject to the husband in all things in the Lord. But I want you to understand, dear friend, that when you get outside of the marriage vows, when you get outside of those relationships, when you defile the marriage bed, my sister, you have become a pawn in the hands of a devil that is out to destroy you and to destroy the kingdom of God. Wives, love your own husband. Your own husband. Thank you, your own husband. You don't need to be looking. You should not be looking. Be faithful to your husband. Be faithful to your wife. Now he says that you're to be faithful to the children. Mothers and dads in our day have become so involved with, with their world that many of them perhaps wish they didn't have the children and they're living like they didn't want any children. We are saying, because of our activity, we say, Mr. Television, we're going to let you rear our children. We're saying to the teachers of our country, you have them more hours of the day than we do, so you take care of the rearing of our children. And if they get too close to us, we'll shove some money in their hand and say, get lost. We don't have time for you. But listen to me, God has given you the responsibility of bringing up your child in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. And friend, do not turn over their soul to somebody else. Love them and teach them. Not only are parents to love their children, but now we find the other end of that. Children are to be faithful to their parents. That is, if mother and daddy have chosen and they have given you a command, you are to obey that command. Amen. Are you listening, young people? You may not like it. If they tell you to clean your room and you don't like it, what do you do? You clean your room anyhow. If they tell you to wash behind your ears and to brush your teeth and to carry out the garbage and to sit down and be quiet, you are to obey them. And the problem we have in our world today is that we have a lot of kids who have decided that they do not have to obey their parents. You know, the one thing I really don't like is a sassy mouth child. As a matter of fact, five across the lips would be real good for some of those. Or better, oh, we aren't supposed to do that in our day. They'll arrest you anymore. But I'm telling you that a hand of experience to the seat of learning will accomplish a whole lot so that you don't have to put one across the lips. Children, obey your parents. That's the word of God. And what I'm saying is that when husbands or wives or children do not do that, what they're done is that they have opened themselves up and Satan is having a heyday in their life and they're being led down a pathway to destruction. Be faithful. The third thing, he says, is to be forceful. Notice that in verse 10 again. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Strong in in the spirit. Now simply stated, that means that you can't handle the devil. He's bigger than you are. But that day when you got saved, God put his spirit in you. He uh, put a seal upon your heart that said uh, that this belongs to God. Hung a sign out on your heart that says this is divine property. No trespassing. And when you allow the devil to come across the bloodline into your life, then you have yielded yourself to a force that you do not even begin to to understand. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. We are to be strong in the Spirit. When you can't handle it yourself, what do you do? You give it to God. As a matter of fact, don't ever take it out of His hand to start with. Just let Him have it. He is your Master. He is your Savior. He is your Lord. Holy Spirit, today I give you the right to overrule in every experience of my life. And the Spirit of God will help you to be strong so that you can overcome the enemy that comes against you. Not only, he says, are we to be strong in the Spirit, but we are to release the power of the Spirit. Now, when God saved you, 
He put the Spirit in you. But our problem is how to get that power out of us. By the way, Jesus, before he went back to heaven, he said to his disciples, tarry ye at Jerusalem until you be empowered with power from on high, endued with power from on high. That word power there is a good word. It's a very powerful word. It's a word that means, in our, uh, it's the same word rather that we get our English word dynamite from. So that when God gave the Spirit into your life, He gave you the dynamite to blow the devil out of your life. He gave you the power to be able to overcome the enemy that comes against you. He gave you the presence and the wonder and the power of His Holy Spirit who will enable you to live in victory every day if you'll just let go and let God have His way in your life. So if we're going to be victorious, if we're going to do this, we've got to prepare ourselves for the battle. Secondly, he says that we are to protect yourself in the battle. Beginning at verse 11, he says, put on the whole armor of God. Now, that just simply means, if you'll go on down beginning at verse 14, you'll find the listing of the pieces of the army. We're to put on the, uh, uh, the helmet of salvation. We're to have the blessed breastplate of righteousness. We're to gird ourselves about with truth. We're to take the shield of faith. We're to have the sword of the Spirit. And we're to be in constant attitude of prayer so that we can overcome the enemy that comes against us. Put on the armor. Then he says, you're to know your enemy. Who is this devil? Who, how does he work? Is he a new thing that has just come along that Baptist preachers thought up so that they could browbeat their people with? Absolutely not. Now listen to me, my friend. The devil and his henchmen, the demons, are, have been around ever since God kicked the devil out of heaven. And they have been tormenting people ever since. Years ago, when I spent much time in Haiti and ministered there and started churches and encouraged the people in the work of the Lord there, I came to understand some things about demonism that I did not know before. Haiti has the most, the most pure form of voodoo that there is in the Western Hemisphere. For they were cut off from the rest of the world for about 200 years. They had brought voodoo into that island from the heart of Africa uh, where they worshiped the devil. And so there in Haiti, uh, they still practice voodoo. It's the religion of the people. And so I, I paid money in order to be able to uh, go into the voodoo services. And I've gone there when they conducted their service. I've heard them as they prayed for Satan to come and to possess them. I've heard the pounding of the tom-toms incessantly as they announced to all the demons in the region that a worship service was going on. I saw them as they drank their rum, as they prayed and as they chanted, as they waited for demons to come and possess their body. I saw them as they, they offered their sacrifices and drank the blood that they offered. And I left there saying, how Hallelujah. I'm glad I don't have to take a chicken to church. I'm glad that I am one who has the blood of Jesus applied to the altar and I don't have to go that way. But I watched those demons. I watched those people. I saw the effect that it had upon them and I said, Hallelujah. I've got a God who lives in me and a spirit who never leaves me and no demon can get into me and I just bless God that my victory is in him. Know your enemy. Enemy. My friend, there's an enemy out there that'll do everything that they can to destroy you. And I want you to know that I'm well aware that in this congregation there are probably people who are sitting in the quiet of their home, maybe in the recluse of some bedroom, and you're dialing up stuff on your computer and engaging your mind in the things of pornography, and every bit of it is being used to the devil to try to destroy your life and to destroy your relationship, your home. There are those of you perhaps who are being led down paths uh, to destruction and you know, you're buying into the thing of smoking dope and all the other stuff that kids and adults today are doing. And I'm going to tell you that in everything that's there, Satan, just as much as he's destroying those people in Haiti, is seeking to destroy you. Know your enemy and know how he works. I had a friend there, great big 
great big Haitian man. And he had been known as one of the top three uh, witch doctors in all of Haiti. And he had been converted. He said that he had three controlled demons. After he was saved, I preached there at the church that he had in his yard in an open air meeting. Over a thousand people would gather there every Sunday to worship. But I interviewed him and I re tape recorded those things. And as I interviewed him, he said, I had three control demons. I had millions of demons, he said, at my command, but three control demons. And I said, what were their names? Don't know why I even asked that, because I didn't understand some of those things then. I said, what were those names? The first one that he gave, I knew immediately. For I was a student of Greek mythology, and I know the names of the pantheon of the Greek gods. And so when he mentioned the first one, Bacchus, I knew immediately who it was. The God of frivolity, the God of drink, the God of the party life. And I said, oh God, that same demon that was alive back in the days of Alexander the Great is still alive today and in our world and he's affecting lives all over this country and we're living in a world that is being affected by that same demon God today where people are selling their souls for a good time for the party world. Well, I don't have time to go through all those names and tell you, but I'm telling you that God says that you're to protect yourself and that is that you're to put on the armor of God and you're to know your enemy, know who he is, and know how he works. Thirdly, he says that we are to practice sound principles of warfare. Look at it. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, if I, we are to be in bar warfare then what kind of war is this all about? Now may I just say, first of all, your battle is not against people. I see a lot of folks every now and again that parents think their problem, their battle is with their children. And I see children that hate their parents and hate their teachers. Isn't it sad that in our world today, the half of the stuff, maybe more than that, that people want, that, that they're involved with, and when they get caught, they want to blame somebody else? Well, my third grade teacher didn't like me. And they blame what is going on in their life on something that happened way back yonder when rather than accepting responsibility for their own ugly ways. Now listen to me. God says that we are engaged in warfare. So if that's true, your problem is not your husband, your problem is not your wife, your problem is not your boss lady or boss man, your problem is not the principal at the school, your problem is the devil. Understand that the devil may be standing behind them, he may be attacking through them, but you need to understand who is back there. Just as Jesus said to Peter when Jesus said, I'm going to Jerusalem and there I'm going to be put to death. And he said, not so, Lord. And Peter, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. For he recognized the voice of the devil coming out of this man whom he loved. No, your enemy. And then be ready to combat your enemy. Notice that he says that there are four categories of demon powers that we're fighting. The first one, he says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. In the Greek language, it is archos. And it means the chief rulers are beings of the highest rank and order in the satanic kingdom. Did I say that again? Chief rulers are beings of the highest rank and order in the satanic kingdom. Years ago in my studies, I became aware of a preacher who he and his wife had brought a young girl, teenager, into their home as a foster child. This girl was a rebellious individual. She had been in foster home after foster home. Nobody could do anything with her. The sociologists didn't know what to do. They were ready just to warehouse her in a prison because nobody could deal with her. She'd go to a home in just a few days. She'd either run them crazy and they'd run her off or she'd run away. Finally, though, this preacher and his wife said, well, let us try and let us see what we can do. So they brought her into their home. And she was just as, not as obnoxious in their home as she had been in all the others. Just as contrary as she had been in all of the others. She cursed them. She cursed the school. She'd go to school and, and leave and run away. She was a chain smoker one after another. And uh, the, the preacher was praying one day and God just said to his heart, her problem is that she's demon possessed. 
And so he began to pray for her, called her into the privacy of his study. Oh, I didn't tell you, not only did this teenage girl cause disruption in the home, she began to hit on the preacher to try to lure him into a relationship, but he would not fall. And the pastor and his wife just stayed true to God. And so as they came to the meeting, and he tape recorded all of this, and I've listened to those tapes. And in one of those sessions, he, as he talked with her, suddenly a voice came out of her mouth that was not her own voice. And that voice was the voice of a demon. And he said, Who are you? And the demon voice said, I am smoke. Well, why are you in her? So I can use her. Well, what are you trying to do? I want to kill her. Why do you want to kill her? So I can be closer to him. To who? Lord Satan. You see, in the demonic realm, there is an attitude or there is a ranking of demons. There are lower level demons, there are middle level demons, there are high level demons, and the, the, the more evil that they're able to do, the more hurt that they're able to bring, the higher they can get, and the closer to the devil they're able to get. And this one who is causing her to chain smoke, he said, I'm trying to kill her so I can get closer to the devil. Now listen to me, folks. Don't you think it's high time that Christians ought to start acting that way with our Lord and say we ought to do everything that we can so that we can get closer to God? Amen. We're fighting in a warfare where Satan is loose and he's doing everything that he can to destroy. One of those ranks are those who are high in the echelon. They're the generals. They're the, the colonels. They're the, the uh, other levels of high area of responsibility. The second is powers. We wrestle against powers. Powers. That word is exousis. That definition means those who, desire, who derive their powers from and execute the will of the chief ruler. So that these very powerful demons, just like my friend in Haiti said, I had three controlled demons. These very powerful rulers are able to come and command other demons in the work that they do. The third is the rulers of the darkness. There, this means the spirit world rulers, those who take control by force, the spirit masters. Some of you adults have never heard that term, but I promise you there's not a young person in this room today who does not understand spirit masters. For they play their games that has come by means of their televisions where they've got their various play things, where they engage in those and they are striving to become spirit masters so that they can command demons and bring those in so that they can destroy their enemies and parents who have not been educated do not understand what they're doing when they allow their children to become involved in this kind of evil sleazy demonic activity that is set to destroy the fourth is spiritual wickedness in high places. Pneumatica parisius. Spiritual wickedness. That is the spirit, wicked spirits of Satan in the heavenlies. Now the demons are all around. God tells us by their names who some of them are. There are those familiar spirits, for instance. And then he involves and engages people in the various processes of the activity that's going on around us. Now I want you to know I understand that some of you have never heard this kind of preaching before. But I'm telling you that it's high time that the people of God awoke to what's going on around and found a way to stand against the devil so that we might be victorious in our everyday life. Now our defense, your defense is to be in Christ. You remember what the scripture says? If any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. 
a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are constantly being made new. Have you found that since you got saved, God is renewing himself in you daily? Have you observed that as you live and have your being and walking in the Lord, that God is just there giving himself in new ways for you every day, opening your eyes to see his ways, opening your mind to understand the ways of the enemy, and helping you to turn aside from the things of the world that you may walk in the ways of God? In Christ. I ask you, are you in Christ? And then if you're in Christ, then he's in you. If he's not in you, you're not in him. But I want you to know you can be saved and still not be in Christ. Because until he takes command in your life, you will never know the wonder of the power that he has offered to every one of his children. So your defense is to be in Christ. Your offense is in the name of Christ, through the blood of Christ, and in the word of Christ. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, They overcame him, that is Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. You know one of the best things you can do when Satan comes your way? Just step up and stand on your hind legs and say, I'll tell you what Jesus has done in my life. When somebody comes by and starts to tempt you to take a drink or take a smoke of some dope, just stand up and say, Hallelujah, let me tell you what Jesus is doing in my life. And just start praying. Praising God. And when you start praising God, the devil will have to tuck his tail and run off somewhere else. For you have power through the blood. And when the devil sets a trap and you're about to fall in, just say, through the blood of Jesus and in the strong name of my master, I command you, leave me alone. And the devil will have to flee. Draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh unto you. Flee from the devil and he will flee from you. I tell you, God will give you power that you can overcome your enemy. Well, I've got to quit. Time's gone. But I want you to understand, dear brothers and sisters, God brought some of you here today so that he could remind you that you need to get saved. You see, the devil's going to try to drag your soul to hell. He's going to do everything he can to keep you blinded and drag your soul to hell. And you're just a heartbeat out of hell. And I've already been there with too many who seemed to be all right one minute and the next minute they fell and they died. Just a heartbeat out of hell. God brought you here, lost man, lost woman, lost young person, so that you can hear his voice and you can be saved today. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. God's spirit is drawing here today. Give him your all. Then there's some of you here that your name's on this roll or some other church roll and you're just as backslid on God as you can be. You're cold, indifferent. You've been dabbling in the things of the world. Your world coming unglued and you don't know what to do. You've just been complaining and griping and grumbling and not knowing that God has already granted you the victory. But friend, you can't get that victory till you get to where God is. And I want to encourage you when the invitation is given in a few moments that you'll be among the first that will walk down this aisle, get on an altar and cry out, God, I have sinned. Be merciful unto me and save me. God, I have sinned. Be merciful unto me and restore me unto my place of blessing in the kingdom of God. If you're backslid, you need to get to where God is today. And then there are some of you here that you're already engaged in warfare and you understand it. And you shall have seen how Satan has encroached upon your world. But it's time, my friend, for you to stand up and put your heel on his neck and say, in the name of my Jesus, I will not give in to you. And when the invitation is given, you ought to come. There are some who have made professions of faith and never done so publicly. You ought to come. There are some of you who are here that, that uh, you're members of another church and God has instructed you to be here on the invitation. You ought to be among those who will be first to come. Defeat the devil. Defeat the devil. Claim the victory that there is in Jesus and respond to the call of his spirit. Let's pray.